Good day and welcome to our explanation of dynamic distribution groups. In this short video, we are going to both explain dynamic distribution groups and how to create them, as well as how to list the members of that distribution group, which is a little more challenging than what you might expect. So let's get started uh, with uh, creating a distribution group and we'll explain it as we go here, what they are. So the first thing you do is go to portal.office.com, uh, log in if you haven't already, and select admin. Uh, you could go just go to admin.microsoft.com, but I find it a pain to remember all the different subsites, so I just go to portal.office.com for everything. Anyway, I think go to show all on the left side here and go down to exchange. Now, what is a dynamic distribution group? And how is it different from a standard distribution group? A standard distribution group is simply a list of email addresses that you have manually added. A dynamic distribution group is a set of members that is calculated each time somebody sends to the group. So it could be based on things like the country you're in or the city you're in or uh, a custom field. Uh, so it may change over time. In fact, the intent is that it does change over time, although it doesn't have to. So let's go create one. So um, again, we're going to the Exchange Admin Center and right out of the, uh, the dashboard, we can go to Groups. Now, if you simply create new group here, you're not going to get a dynamic distribution group. They're special, so you have to click the drop down here and select dynamic distribution list. And I'm gonna call this all Canada because that's where I am. And I'm gonna put in all Canada here, not case sensitive by the way. So uh, you can uh, uppercase or lowercase, it doesn't make any difference. Um, I'm going to select um, uh, an owner, uh, I'll make that myself. I'm gonna grade this out so you can't see it. There we go. Now, uh, what type of people will be members? Well, I want it to be possibly everybody. So I'm just gonna leave it all recipient types. And this is the most interesting part of a dynamic distribution group, the rules. So let's take a look. I'm gonna, uh, going to select add rule. And then what type of rule? Well, I'm going to uh, make it based on the state or province. So I'm gonna go into here and I'm going to add Alberta. And we only have offices in Alberta, uh, BC and Ontario. So I'm going to select Alberta here. Now, if I don't press plus, nothing much happens. So watch this, if I put in BC, Let's just do this. I'll click OK, and there it is. Now, if I go uh, back to here and I type in BC, and I don't click the plus, I just click OK. It doesn't give me an error message. It just doesn't do anything. So um, that's not good. So I have multiple provinces I want to put in here. So uh, I'm going to also put in British Columbia. Select Add. I'm also going to type in Ontario, and select plus. However, I know for our, our Alberta staff, which is where almost everybody is, I have a few people in our Active Directory that are listed as AB, not Alberta. So I'm going to have to add that as well. And now when I click OK, you can see I get this lovely list of state or provinces. Uh, so what other uh, types of rules can we add here? Because I can combine them. I could select Add Rule and I could say I only want people, I'll say Department, and I'll put HR. Now, keep in mind, this isn't just who's in HR, it's who's listed as being in HR. Let's show you how to get into that. So uh, when I go into, uh, so I'll click save on this and it will create it. Now this will take a minute, by the way. That actually went faster than I expected. So uh, let's go back and see where I would set that uh, HR uh, field. So I'm gonna go back to my admin center. I'm gonna go to active users. And I'm just going to click on myself. And then here is where, if, if you're not running Active Directory on an on-premise server, uh, where you can just make these changes and they would sync up to the cloud, you can make them right inside of your Office 365 portal. So here we are. So I'm going to go into here and I'm going to select Manage Contact Information. And this is re where these fields are taken from. So Department, I'm going to put HR. Okay, and I can select uh, changes, save changes. Now, I actually don't want that. So I'm gonna remove that. I'm gonna click save changes. I'm gonna get out of here. I'm gonna go back to my group. I'm also now going to go modify it, which is something interesting because I've decided, now I don't want this for HR. I want this to be for everybody. So I just don't want this just for Canadian HR. I want this for everybody that's not in HR uh, anywhere in Canada. So I'm gonna double click on it. And I'm going to go, well, let's just roll through these one by one. So the ownership we've already talked about, membership. Here's the field uh, that we care about. So I'm going to remove this department field. There we go. And 
Now I just have a simple rule that they're people from Alberta, British Columbia, Ontario, or AB, as again shown in the Active Directory. Delivery management. So this is uh, exactly what you'd expect. Do you want people, do you want anybody to be able to send to the to this email address? So if this is a, a large distribution group, say something like all staff, you almost certainly do not want to select this. That would be spammers and hackers and anybody else can send to everybody in your company. Only senders from inside your company is a pretty common setting and in fact is the default as you can see. Alternately, you can specify people. So you could uh, select the plus here and then add in you know, people from your HR department, you could add in people from your marketing department, IT, uh, C-level people, whatever. If you wanted to lock it down to just those people. Message approval. Do you want to moderate this? Most people don't. I haven't seen people moderate messages in years, but it does happen. So this is where you'd set moderation if you have it. Email addresses. This is important. It defaults when you set it up through Office 365 to be whatever your tenant is under. And I most certainly do not want people sending to my tenant account, I want them sending it to UR Tech. So I'm going to select plus here and I'm going to type in all Canada. Again, it's not case sensitive uh, at urtech.ca. If I don't make this the reply to address, it will not be the primary address. So you probably want to select make this the reply address. And I'll show you what I, what I mean when I click OK here. There it is. So you can see this is bold. That's the address that counts. Let's go through that. Mail tip, this is just a text that pops up. You probably don't care, don't want to use it. Send as and send on behalf of. Uh, this is typical exchange permissions uh, stuff, uh, not, not used by many people here. So let's click save. There we go. Now you'll notice on the right side here, it shows all Canada at urtech.ca because that is now the primary address. And now the question is, how do we determine who's in that list? Because if I simply go to Outlook and I type in all Canada at urtech.ca, what I will find is that there's no little plus to the left of it, which means I cannot preview who's in that list before I click send. And that may not be great. So what I need to do is have a method to, to view who's in that list. And you would think you just double click on this or right click or create a report or something, but Nope, there's nothing uh, you can do inside of the Office 365 web portal to show you who's in it, which I personally find nutty. And I would have said years ago that that's just a, you know, version one oversight, they'll get to it. Apparently, they're just not going to get to it at all. And uh, the answer is to use PowerShell. So let's go and show you how to get this solved with PowerShell. Not very hard, but definitely different. So the first thing you need to do is bring up a PowerShell window. So just right click on your start button, Go to Windows PowerShell. Make sure you use the admin one or you will be going nowhere. There we go. So what we need to do is just run through a set of commands. Uh, it looks challenging, but trust me, it's not. Just copy and paste the commands. I will have them on our site so you can literally copy and paste them out here. So first thing you need to do is set the uh, remote uh, policy, remote execution policy. Say A for all on this. It takes a second and there you go. Next thing you need to do is get it to ask you for who you are. So we just set a variable, user credentials, get credentials, we do that. I'm gonna gray this out so you can't see what I'm typing. But I've typed in my admin credentials for Office 365, which is just an email address and a password. There it is. Now I need to create a session using that user credential you can see here in the variable. Again, this is just copy paste stuff, not near as challenging as you'd think. There it is, completed. Now we need to import that session into this PowerShell. So now I'm just going to paste in, get the, uh, the dynamic distribution group. I'm just going to set a variable here of, uh, and I'm going to call the variable my query. It really doesn't make any difference what you call it, um, other than you need to make sure you use that variable in the future. So I'm going to set that to all Canada. In quotes. And let's see who's in it. Well, it didn't return anyone. Let's see what's wrong. So I'm going to 
paste in a command, which is gave me the list of dynamic distribution groups. And I can see that all Canada is correct there. Okay, so I've run this a number of times and uh, found uh, that it is not returning the results I'm expecting, as in no results. So what I've done is I've just closed the session and I'm gonna open up a brand new one and do the entire thing again. Screwed up my credentials there, so I had to do it twice. Because I'm doing this very quickly. Bingo, and there we go. So that is who is in the distribution list. That's the email addresses. So now I could uh, just grab this information and I can right click and copy it, paste it into Excel, manipulate it as I want. If it's a larger list, well, that's not very convenient. So I could go up and run the same command again, but I can this time I can pipe it, uh, which is just the circle bar there, to a CSV so I can work on it. Export CSV. C colon backslash, uh, let's do uh, DG uh, addresses. How's that? There we go. Doesn't make any difference what we call it. There we go. Oop, I see I have a quote in there rather than a semicolon. Best if you spell it right. And there it is. Now I can go to my C drive, and there it is. I can expand, I can... So one more thing I want to explain is the uh, Azure Active Directory versus Office 365 uh, directory that you think you're working on. Uh, when you are adjusting uh, user settings in Office 365, you're really changing them in Azure Active Directory, whether you want to or not. That's where your Active Directory information is stored. So that's easy enough to get to. You simply go to portal, dot azure.com and if you haven't signed in already you sign in using the same credentials as you have for your global admin account in office 365 and what you want to do is go to either azure active directory if it's sitting here if it's not just do a search for it azure active directory there it is and then you can click users and there are all of the users and in here you can click on someone and bring up their details, including their address information. Okay, so we have explained what dynamic distribution lists do, how you can create and edit them, how you use PowerShell to find out who's actually in those lists. And we've also shown you quite quickly here how to review your Azure Active Directory and make sure that it's the same as your Office 365 directory, which of course they have to be. If they're not, you need to put a call into Microsoft. All right, that's it. If you have any questions or concerns, please get a hold of us at www.urtech.ca. Thank you. Bye-bye.